Okay, how many people here like wine? How many people here love Petaluma? Well, this is a great combination here today. And I want to thank the Petaluma Gap and Rodney Strong for the wine which we enjoyed with our lunch. We are delighted here to have Cheryl Quist, who is the Executive Director of the Petaluma Gap. And let me tell you, the Petaluma Gap is a big deal for this community. It is the only ABA, she'll explain what that is, that was approved in 2018. Um, and it now puts Petaluma on the map in terms of our very distinctive wind to wine lines. And that bodes well for our future. But please understand, this is the beginning of a process. And what's nice is that Petaluma is the gateway to Sonoma County. Perhaps more important uh, for this community is this ABA gives agriculture new, exciting, and lucrative opportunities as it relates to their land because the price of that land is likely to go up. Uh, currently, uh, our grapes command among the highest prices in the region. It's only gonna go up. So with Cheryl's leadership and the Gap Board, and this is important, with your support, we are eager to get the word out that Petaluma has its own ABA, the Petaluma Gap. Cheryl? There's a little bit of my bio on the camera, on the uh, screen up there. Uh, as you'll see, I grew up on the East Coast. I live in Santa Rosa with my husband. I worked in the Anderson Valley, with the Anderson Valley Wine Growers up in Mendocino County prior to joining the Petaluma Gap. And also, I worked with uh, the Rome Rangers, which is another wine trade association, uh, as an independent contractor and also with nonprofits helping them with fundraising through wine tasting events. Um, I work part-time also for Duckhorn Wine Company. Is everybody familiar with Duckhorn? They make some beautiful tabs and Merlots. Um, and also, uh, I started my career in high tech on the East Coast and then moved to Silicon Valley. So with that, I want to go to the next slide. Are we going to be changing those slides for me? Okay. All right, so thank you so much for inviting me to join you today and to speak about the Petaluma Gap Wine Growers Alliance and the Petaluma Gap American Viticultural Area. I am really honored to be here. Next slide. So I'm going to cover a lot of ground over the next 20 minutes or so, beginning with the history of wine growing in the Petaluma Gap. I'll cover a little bit about the Alliance and our mission where the ABA is located, some of the interesting statistics and why the area is so unique, and as you know, it's all about the wind, and why we applied for recognition of the ABA by the federal government, and how that came to pass. It's a pretty interesting story. Then I'll describe our board of directors and show you who our members are and talk a little bit about some of the individual wineries and vineyards. I'll finish my presentation by describing how you can get involved, and we do hope you will. I'm really lucky to work with a dedicated board of directors and with so many talented winemakers and viticulturists. It's a great group. Next slide. So grapes have been growing in the Petaluma Gap for nearly 200 years. The first vines were planted in the 1830s by General Vallejo. And just a short time after that, the first winery was established. It's actually in a facility that was previously used for making beer. By the early 1900s, there were over a thousand acres planted in the Petaluma area. And then came Prohibition and Phylloxera. We all know what happened with that. After the repeal of Prohibition, things began to recover. And in the 1980s, the Sonoma Coast ABA was established. With that, 
interest in planting grapevines surged, and our vineyards came back into production. Now, fast forward to 2005, and that is the year that the Petaluma Gap Wine Growers Alliance was formed. More about that in a moment. In 2011, the Wine Spectator magazine's number one wine of the year was a Pinot Noir made by Costa Brown from grapes grown in the Petaluma Gap. So the seeds were sown, and in 2015, the Alliance submitted its application to the federal government to recognize the Petaluma Gap as an official ABA, or American Viticultural Area. Our application was approved on December 7, 2017, and in January of this year, the first wine labels with Petaluma Gap as the ABA on the front were submitted for approval. Next slide. <clears throat> so as I mentioned, the Alliance was formed in 2005. It really began as a gathering for growers to hear and share their stories. As everyone knows who lives in the Gap, the wind can be pretty darn formidable. It's cool here, and that's because of the wind and the fog. As local viticulturalist Mark Greenspan said in a recent article in Wine Business Monthly Magazine, I like to put a positive spin on the windy climate effect. One could argue that wind conveys an element of terroir to a region. But from a grower's perspective, wind sucks. <laughs> so the meetings really were an opportunity to share war stories, explain or explore ways to cope, and quite honestly, drink some beer. I wasn't there, but that's what I hear. <laughs> Over time, the winemakers and winery owners joined in, and the rest is history. So we now have about 80 winery and grower members. Next slide. <clears throat> So what's our mission? There really are three simple goals. To promote the growers and vintners within the Petaluma Gap, and to foster the production of high quality wines crafted from grapes grown in the Petaluma Gap American viticultural area. To cultivate positive relationships within the community by elevating awareness of growing and winemaking practices and understanding of the wine growers' commitment to respect and protect our land. And to continue to advance Petaluma's 150 year or more heritage as a successful wine producing center. Next slide. So where is the Petaluma Gap relative to Sonoma and Marin counties and what are its boundaries? This map shows it. It's the pink and purple areas at the bottom of the map. It stretches from Bodega Bay in the northwest across the 101 highway and out to the edge of Sonoma Mountain, just east of Sonoma State University, and all the way south towards San Pablo Bay. The Gap is actually a sub-ABA of Sonoma County, and there are 18 sub-ABAs in total in Sonoma. And it also includes a portion of Marin County. It kind of puts us in an unusual position because we straddle the two counties. The ABA got its name from the gaps in the hillsides along the coastal range that allow the cold Pacific air to spill over the ridges and into the region, flowing to the south and out through San Pablo Bay. San Pablo Bay creates the draw and the gaps in the ridges are the openings that allow the cold air to flow. Next slide. On this map, it's a little easier to see the size of the ABA. It's more than 200,000 acres. You can also see the topographical characteristics with the hills shown in light brown running in parallel from northwest to southeast. Next slide. So here are some interesting statistics. Of the 200,000 acres, about 4,000 acres are currently planted with grapevines. There are six tasting rooms and the wineries are thriving. About 75% of what is grown in the Gap is Pinot Noir and the balance is split 
about evenly between Chardonnay and Syrah. There are a couple other small plantings of Riesling and a few other uh, more esoteric grapes, but largely it's Pinot, Chardonnay, and Syrah. It's also interesting to note that many of our winery members are physically located outside of Capetalum Gap, but they are getting grapes from within the gap and thus, thus qualify for membership. So anyone who grows grapes in the gap or makes wine from gap fruit can be a member. And there are currently more than 80 vineyards inside the gap, some small at around an acre or two, and some very large, greater than 100 acres. Next slide. This slide can be a little confusing, but what it shows on the left two columns, there are a handful of growers, but they represent more than 50% of the planted vineyards. These are vineyards that are larger than 100 acres. On the right two columns, you'll see that about 40% of our vineyard owners, which is the bulk of our members, have very small vineyards, less than 10 acres, and many are just a few acres. Next slide. I wanted to point out some of the larger <coughs> vineyards in the Petaluma Gap. You might recognize some of these names. Gap's Crown on Lehigh Road in Pengrove is 150 acres. Keller Estate with both their La Cruz and El Coro vineyards are on Lakeville Highway and between the two properties are about 100 acres. And then McAvoy Ranch's Zaya Vineyard with more than 50 acres. And in total, our grower members represent about 87% of the planted vineyards in the gap. We'll get the rest of them to join, we hope, soon. Next slide. So why is the Petaluma Gap unique? Remember when we were looking at the maps, I talked about the gaps and the ridges in our terrain. This unique geography actually creates a wind tunnel. The gaps allow the marine air to rush in without anything to block it. As a result, the fog and cold air settle in overnight, followed by sun that clears away that fog by late morning. And as the sun heats up the land, the temperature can rise by as much as 50 degrees in the mid-afternoon. I'm sure you've all experienced this. That brings us the wind and the return of the fog at the end of the day. Wind in the gap ranges from 8 to 20 miles per hour on a daily basis. Next slide. So to get a better understanding of the wind in the gap, before we applied for our AVA status, we did a significant wind study. And on this map, you'll see several blue circles inside the red border. That red border is the AVA boundary. The circles are different sizes depending on the frequency of the wind. Valley Ford is the largest as it is where the wind is the strongest and most consistent. Outside the AVA boundaries, that is outside the red border, you'll see some orange circles at Bellevue Ranch, down in Nevado, and over in Sonoma Valley. These are outside the gap and you'll notice they are much smaller. That's because the wind is often much calmer in those areas outside the gap. Next slide. So this slide is really just a different way to look at the same wind data. But on this chart, it's easy to see the relative frequency of winds over 8 miles per hour in the pedal in the gap. Those are the blue bars versus our neighboring AVAs represented in the orange bars. It's really quite a dramatic difference. Next slide. So, why does the wind matter? When the wind blows over the vineyards at a sustained speed of 8 miles per hour or higher, it has a dramatic effect on the physiology of the grapevines. They begin to shut down and go into a self-protection mode. They don't produce sugar as readily, so the grapes have to hang on the vines longer to ripen. They actually ripen at lower sugar levels, and the individual berries are smaller. So if you look at a cross-section of these berries, there's more skin to juice in the ratio, and the skins are where the color, the texture, and the tannins are created. Thus, you end up with more concentrated flavors 
along with ideal acidity levels. These wines tend to be more balanced and age-worthy. Lucky for us. Next slide. So what does that do for the wine? I thought that these three quotes really sum it up best from local wine writer Virginia Boone at the Press Democrat. It's, uh, it's the Syrah that is most often revelatory, offering a cool climate temperament that's as much about structure as power. From Michael Brown, co-founder of Costa Brown Winery, the wines from the Petaluma Gap region are rich, voluptuous, and structured with dark black and blue fruit, deep texture, and broad structure. And from Pax Mali, as a winemaker purchasing fruit from the brave, wind-buffeted grape growers of the Petaluma Gap, I have one clear desired outcome, and that is to make great wine. The near from the Gap deliver fresh, precise flavors that create wines with energy, depth, and verve. Next slide. So getting back to the ABA and how it got approved, the petition was written by a gentleman named Doug Covert, who's a member of our board of directors, and it took him about 12 months to create the application. We had to defend our choice of the AVA name, prove it had distinguishing features, document its boundaries, and provide USGS maps and boundary descriptions. Then the petition was submitted to the TTB, that's short for Alcohol, Tobacco, Tax, and Trade Bureau, quite a mouthful, and reviewed for its completeness. It was published as a proposed new rule and opened for public comment. All of the comments that came in were positive and supported the petition. And then the, two, the November 2016 presidential election happened and there was a change in administration. Next slide. And roadblocks appeared. There was a moratorium on new rulemaking. Does everybody remember that? The petition had to be signed off by TTB and Treasury and key positions in the Treasury were vacant for months. The petition was sidelined, put in a stack somewhere. So we reached out to Congressman Mike Thompson and Jared Huffman. They said they would help. Another couple of months passed. We contacted some friends at an organization called Wine America, which is a DC lobbying group. And they gave us some advice. They said, no, Gerald, you have to talk to the congressman's chiefs of staff. They really run the show. So, so we did in October 2017, and they were incredibly helpful. Next slide. They arranged for a letter signed by both congressmen to be sent to Treasury Secretary Steve Mnuchin. At the time, as I know you recall, something else happened. October 2017, it was the wildfires. Even though the fires didn't impact our vineyards and our grapes had already been harvested, Sonoma County was in the news and on the top of people's minds. Suddenly our petition was found and put forth for signature. And on the morning of December 6th, we got a call from the TTB letting us know our petition had been approved and would be published on December 7th in the Federal Register. After that, there's another 30 days comment period, but December 7th, it was officially approved. We have finally earned our ADA, and we are forever grateful to our congressmen and their staffs for their help. And to this day, I don't think any other ADAs have been approved. There are some others in the queue, but nothing else has moved since our ADA was approved. So we're still the newest in the country. Next slide. So why did we work so hard to get the AVA recognized? There are more than 240 AVAs in the country, and about half of them are in California. There are 18 in Sonoma County alone. We wanted to be able to designate the AVA on the wine label and to be able to show how unique our wines are. When, consu 
when consumers shop for wine, the wine label is the key to their selecting the wines. But the pedal in the gap couldn't be on the front label until the ABA was approved. Now that it has been approved, we can begin to educate consumers on the unique quality and taste profile of our wines. And it's our hope that when they shop for wine, even if they aren't familiar with the winery or the winemaker, that they will associate Petaluma Gap with high quality wines and choose them in part based on where the grapes are grown. Next slide. So finally, we are starting to see wine labels bearing the Petaluma Gap AVA. It's really thrilling to go into a store and see this. <laughs> So we've got Ramey, Deloche, and Jackson Estate, all larger, well-established wineries are including Petaluma Gap on their labels. And some of our smaller wineries also, like McAvoy, Keller, Adobe Road, and Fogline. And as new vintages are released, you'll see more winemakers citing the new ABA as well. It's kind of a process that takes a bit of time because we couldn't, they couldn't put the ABA on the label until it was approved. And so you've got a couple of years time in between the release of the wine and when it, um, so it takes a little bit of leeway, a little bit of lead time to see the labels actually in the marketplace. Next slide. How does this benefit the local economy? Petaluma, as uh, we said earlier today, is the gateway to the North Coast wine country. The establishment of the ABA recognizes both the uniqueness of this area and the quality of what has been created here. The Alliance offers an educational forum for growers and producers to work together to improve the wines that are being made. We also work with local hotels, restaurants and caterers, cheese and olive oil producers, and other businesses that are suppliers to the wine industry, and we look for opportunities to support one another. We are also actively involved with both the Sonoma County wine growers and the Sonoma County vintners to support their efforts in the area of sustainability and charitable fundraising. Uh, I don't know if any of you were aware that the Sonoma County barrel auction that happened back in April, we donated, between the ABA donating a guy's lot and a gal's lot, male winemakers teamed up and the female winemakers to make a one-of-a-kind wine. And then we had about another eight or ten winery members who also did, donated auction lots, and in total they brought in over $60,000. Next slide. So I hope you enjoyed the wines that were served with lunch. Uh, as we said earlier, they were donated by Rodney Strong. The grapes for both the Chardonnay and the Pinot Noir served today are from the Blue Wing Vineyard in the Petaluma Gap. That's on the south end of the Gap near, down near San Pablo Bay. Justin Seidenfeld is the winemaker for Rodney Strong and he is the president of our board of directors. And up on the screen there you can see some of the tasting notes for what was in your glass. The beautiful wines. Okay, next slide. So now that the ABA has been approved, what's next? The approval was not the end goal. It really is just the beginning. And now the hard work starts. In 2019, we have several events planned, beginning with January 8th and the celebration of the first anniversary of the Petaluma Gap ABA. It will be one year ago, on that day, January 8th, that our winemakers were first allowed to submit wine labels with the ABA on the front for approval by TTB. I don't know if you know this, but every single wine label has to go through the TTB for approval. You can't put it in the marketplace without getting it approved by TTB. Uh, we also have technical seminars planned, and we partner with Sonoma County Vintners on many of their events. We will be participating in other California-based events, including World of Pinot Noir in Santa Barbara in March, the San Francisco Vintners Marketplace later in the year. And we are also planning on taking Petaluma Gap winemakers on the road to LA in the fall. Next slide. We also publish a monthly newsletter, are building retail partnerships, and work with several wine writers, as well as posting on social media. 
In fact, our, our monthly newsletter list now goes out to over a thousand subscribers. Um, so if you haven't signed up yet, please, I hope you'll go on to petalumagap.com and become a subscriber. Next slide. So this is some of our key players, our board of directors, our winery and brewer members, and our associate business members and sponsors. So as I mentioned, Justin Seidenfeld is our president. Erica Stancliffe, winemaker for Trombetta Family Wines. She's our vice president. Dan Aguilar from Mechanics Bank is our treasurer. And Dr. Kathy O'Donnell, a professor at San Francisco State University is our secretary. And then we have several other wineries and growers represented on the board. And you can see there's a pretty extensive list of wineries and growers that are members and associate businesses as well. Next slide. So we'd love for you to join us. Here's how you can get involved. You can support our wineries by buying their wine for yourself, your family, and your friends. Be great holiday gifts. <laughs> and ask, ask for these wines. When you go into restaurants and wine shops, we really want to get Puddle in the Gap wines onto wine lists. So if they aren't already there, ask for them. You can become a member. You can be an individual consumer member as a friend. You can become a business associate business member. Um, and you can also become a sponsor and get involved in our events and activities. And if anyone's interested, my contact information is up on the screen. And I'd also be happy to talk uh, after Q&A. And now I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Yes? One of the greatest features of enjoying going to one is out to dinner at a local restaurant is when they advertise that the yeah, I, uh, I would encourage any restaurant owners, if there are any here, to do that. It would be fabulous. And if they aren't doing it, might you suggest it to them? I think that one went out of business, but nonetheless. Another question? So Alexander Valley is way up further north, um, and they, I think in Alexander Valley, Zinfandel and maybe Cab are, are their two, their sweet spots, yeah. It's a much warmer warmer climate. You don't get the wind like you do in the Gap. I mean, our, our AVA is really quite unique. And one interesting thing I, I've been reading about, whether you believe in climate change or not, uh, it, as what, what we're seeing is that temperatures are rising, at least they have in the last few years, and um, there, of course, Pinot Noir, our primary grape variety, likes cool fog. It likes cool evenings, and it likes the very dramatic change in temperature. And so I think we are going to see more and more people seeking Petaluma Gap fruit because the wines have that nice balance and complexity and the, and the right levels of acidity in them, whereas some of the more traditional areas that have been growing Pinot Noir might, they may have to switch to different varieties, I don't know. So it's temperature and the wind and the, I mean, it's not just the dirt. Actually. Yeah, no, it's the wind and the fog and the temperature changes. Yeah. It's another <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't quite know. No, there is no logo on the bottle, but we are actually in the process of working with a beverage attorney um, to trademark uh, the words wind to wine. I mean, some of you may recall we had a wind to wine festival a few years ago. That was before I joined the Pedal in the Gap as the executive director, but um, that is a a uh, phrase that we are going to be trademarking as a collective mark that any of our winery members can use. No, there's no stamp on the wines themselves. It's simply the the TTB controls and allows the Petal in the Gap to be put on the label 
as long as the fruit comes from the Petaluma Gap AVA. Another question back there? So if you take, uh, it sounds like the Petaluma Gap wines, the reds might be really special here because you, you service us in. Uh, it's a Pinot Noir, yeah. Oh, Pinot, okay. Yep. And so um, if you take the same plant, and it's, a, let's say, Pinot grapes or Zinja or whatever, and you plant it up in Alexander Valley, or you plant it in France, or you plant it here in the Gap, well, wine made from those grapes, even though it's the same identical plant, will they be different just because of the, the uh, weather, the atmosphere? I don't think, uh, uh, Kip, I think maybe you can answer this question better, but um, I don't think it would be a good idea to put Pinot Noir in Al Alexander Valley because it's just not the right environment. It would, it's too hot. So I don't think it, it, there's a difference where it's from and the weather. And no, they do not taste the same. Those are bad. Laws are in a different area. They are not going to taste the same. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So I don't know much about wines, and I noticed on the pictures of the labels that said Petaluma Gap was just under that. Is that kind of standard to show the ABA where those grapes were grown? Yes, the higher priced wines will be will have the ABA on them. Yes, yeah, some of some wines do say just California, um, and those are the wines that are kind of you, the winemakers might be buying bulk uh, juice or uh, it, the more descriptive you can be about the wine, uh, the better it is. Um, because people get a much better sense of place of where the grapes were grown. Yes? Are you actually going to measure from, from the standpoint the, the real economic benefits I mean, year after year? Will you be able to measure the effectiveness of the ABA in terms of business knowledge? Uh, I don't think that's really within our mission. Our mission is more on the promotion side, awareness building. Um, we may do some measuring down the road, but it's, I think that's probably more the province of like the Chamber of Commerce or something to really measure. One more question. Sure. Uh, if we become members, do we get a discount on the So, so, so the uh, friend members, consumer memberships, um, that's our, initial entry level of membership and you get the, the newsletter, you get an invitation to the party and the party is coming up January 8th um, and we also do provide a membership card. Now we leave it up to the wineries what they want to do if, some, if a member of Petal in the Gap Wine Growers walks in. Um, if you walked into Keller Estate or Adobe Road or some one of the local wineries, I'm sure they would probably either pour you a taste of a bottle that isn't normally served during wine tasting, one of the more precious bottles, or they might give you a discount. It really is up to the winery. And about once a year, I usually send out an email saying, what kind of benefits would you offer? And I put those out as an example of the kinds of benefits a friend might get, but it's not something that I'm able to maintain because wineries make changes to their offerings all the time. Um, anybody who is a associate business member would get the benefits of the individual membership as well as additional benefits for business members. If all else fails, mention Cheryl's name. I'm sure you're going to be in. <laughs> So I have a question. I guess, you know, with the winds that are there, you know, sometimes with wines in the fall, if there's rains, there's mildew, there can be mold. I would think that with more air circulation, it would be less of a problem. I don't know if you can sell it or market it, but I would think it would be actually good for the grape growers. Yeah, and the, the wind is helpful in those situations. Um, we've been lucky in the last few vintages mm -hmm. that we've been able to harvest, even though it takes longer hang time to get the fruit to ripen we've been able to harvest largely before the rains do come. We did have a couple of rain events this year, and exactly what you said, that breeze really helps to dry off the vines so that mildew doesn't come. Wonderful. Yeah. 
Yeah. So in, in your job qualifications, is one of the things you need to do is do grape stomping, or is there any other special <laughs> qualification for your assignment? Oh, you'd be surprised. <laughs> well, thank you so much for this. It was wonderful. We had a great job for you guys. And I do have a speaker for the speakers. There's a nice Bluetooth speaker here. And so thank you very much for that. And um, once again, appreciate having you. So everyone, thank you for coming today. Um, remember this afternoon, Ben O'Cummings for the fundraiser for the Interactors. Be sure not only to enjoy the pastries, but remember we're doing this for the people up there at Paradise. So with that, we'll see you next week when we're going to have one last week before the end of the year. With this, the meeting is adjourned. Thank you for coming. <laughs> <laughs>